everyone, this is Nicola from That Planner Girl and I'm coming at you today with a, a review of some Kmart planner supplies that I've picked up. So I went to Kmart the other day and grabbed all of these supplies. As I talk about each product, I'll have um, the prices listed here somewhere, but they were all very cheap. So I got two of the dot grid journals, uh, two planners, some stickers and some highlighters. So. Um, I'll go through each of these things with you and just chat about sort of the quality and what they're like and um, we'll do some pen testing as well. So let's get into it. So the first thing I got are these planner sticker books. So these were, again, very cheap. So I'm going to open them up and we'll see. I actually haven't had a look in here yet and I, so I don't know what we get. So it is actually a booklet. So there are sheets that are all attached on the top. So we have... This first page, it's got Like a Boss, Make Today Count, some individual checklist boxes, uh, Tackle Today, New Day, Tasks, To-Do Lists, sort of a decorative functional page. And they are on white sticker paper. The next page looks like it's on clear sticker paper, so that's cool. So we've got uh, Your Wonderful Party Weekend. So this is less functional and a little bit more decorative, but again, really fun. Uh, gold foil, if you can see that there, and a lot of like pinks, greens, pastel -y colors. The next page is an exercise page. So again, this is on white sticker paper. So it's got daily steps, don't stop, week, maybe to track which week you're up to, workout log, cardio. And this is really cool and functional, but like you've only got three stickers to track your daily steps. So if you wanted to actually track this daily, you would need uh, a lot of these sticker books, but maybe they'll give you some ideas and you can test it out and then head on over to Etsy and grab some full sheets of um, sort of step trackers and stuff like that. The next one is a to-do list page. So these are quite large stickers, time to tick these off. Blank trackers and then full checklists, which are very functional, all in black, pink and gray. The next one is some sort of appointment labels or strips, uh, little stickers that say done and not done. And again, these big sort of four checkbox stickers, three checkbox stickers. This one's really functional actually. It's got meeting, reminder, short term, long term, top three, follow up, appointment in this sort of peachy and grey colour. I don't know about this leopard print here, that's a bit unusual, but uh, the peach and the grey is really lovely. And then we've got in this uh, mint again, we've got some buy lists, wish lists, weekend project notes, and a bunch of icons. So that's what's included in the Kmart sticker book. So that's seven, ass seven assorted sheets. Uh, I think it's really great value. I think if you're wanting to try out some different sort of styles, try out some stickers, not sure if you're gonna use them or not, pick up this and then give them a go. If you like them, there's plenty of this sort of thing available on Etsy if you want a specific sticker. So that's the planner sticker booklet. The next thing I'm going to talk about is this um, weekly planner. So I think this was $2 or $2.50. And it's called Weekly Planner, Personalize Modern Planner. Modern Planner, Personalize Your Life. Um, and the brand is Anko. So if you pull that out, this is approximately A5 size, let me compare. This is my A5 Leuchtturm, so it's a little bit wider than an A5 Leuchtturm, but basically the same size. Very thin, would easily fit in a traveler's notebook or something. And then this is a 52 week year planner. So if you open it up, first page is blank. And then we've got hello, and then I guess you could write the name of the month in there if you wanted to, and it is undated. So we've got one, okay, so you've got the month and it goes straight into your weeks. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend. There is only one spot for the weekend box, which um, I have a lot of plans on the weekend, so I find this a bit annoying, but um, got quite a bit of space there. So that's your four weeks. And then it goes into the specific week. So you've got your daily plans, stuff to remember, get it done, wish list and goals. And then we have the month again. Okay, so I haven't actually looked at this before. So it looks like it's 
the one month and you've got five weeks in the month. Or in this case, yeah. They've left room for six weeks in the month, I guess, so that you don't have to double up on boxes. But most months, I guess, are five weeks long. So you've got enough room to do four weeks, your fifth week, and then some extra stuff. And then we're on to the next month. And then you get one, two, three, four weeks, five weeks, and stuff to get done. So it's like that all the way through the planner. It does, it's quite a small planner, so it does lay flat, really easy to write on all sides of the page. And it's the same format all the way through. So really simple little planner. Um, it does say on the back here that it's got one year, 12 months, and 60 week overviews. So yeah, plenty of space for the whole year. Um, I don't necessarily know whether this would be enough room for me and I don't love the layout because weekend is not included, but I had a thought and obviously anyone can enjoy this planner, but if you've got kids who want to get into planning with you and see you planning and want to get into it as well for $2.50, this is a great little planner. Like it looks professional. You can cover it in stickers, you can write in it, and they can do it with you without you having to spend a fortune on like a like expensive or full-blown planner. So I thought that would be a neat little idea, great for kids. But yeah, so that's that planner. And then the other three that I have here are sort of the bulk of this review is the dot grid journals. I've got two of them here just to compare and see if they're the same. And this ideas and planner ideas and plans journal so again this is let's do a comparison. exactly the same size as my Lodstrom A5 journal and about the same thickness so they come cling wrapped like this in my Kmart they often don't because people will open them just to look in them so that's a bit annoying but I wanted to get both of these because as you can see, they look like they're a little bit of a different thickness and I'm not quite sure what the difference is. It doesn't sort of say it on the front cover or anything. So I wanted to get both and we'll compare. And then I also got this um, A5 planner and I haven't had a look in that yet. So we'll give that a look. So I've got a knife here. I'll just open up the plastic on this one. Okay, so right away it feels different the gray planner yeah very different feeling okay so we've got two dot journals here I'm gonna take these cover things off so these tags are exactly the same so there's no indication on the outside of the journal that they have like different covers sort of thing um, dot journal yeah so they look identical but as you can see, one of these has a hard cover and one of them has a soft cover. So I can't bend this at all. It's got a very like rigid cardboard cover. Whereas this has a much softer, almost like faux leather feeling cover. Um, I'm not sure what it's made out of because it doesn't say on any of the, on any of the details. I'm assuming it's a faux leather, but it is a lot softer. And Let's see if we just get the pages together. So they look to me like, I'm not gonna count them, but they look to me like they're the same number of pages. It's just that this cover is quite a bit thicker, so it does make it a bulkier feeling notebook. Okay, cool. Uh, so this one has a sort of a texture to it. It's, um, like I said, it's a little bit squishy faux leather. This is a fabric cover. I like both of them, to be honest. They're both um, very neutral. I believe there might have been some other colors there, but I'll have to check on the website and I'll leave it linked below. Um, but they both just say dot journal on it in this sort of very simple font. And then the back of them is completely plain. So there's actually no like branding on them anywhere that I've seen so far. So we'll start with the black one. We'll see if they're the same. We'll do it at the same time actually. So the inside is gray for the black and then blue, or blue, mint, aqua, teal. I'm not really sure. Open up the first page. Like most notebooks, this first page often sort of sits a bit funny. I always skip it. And then we're just straight into the dot grid. So, yep. Okay. So I'm just going to look at one of them because it doesn't seem to be much sense looking at both. They're identical on the inside. 
So we have this nice white paper and a nice dot grid. So first of all, it does lay flat. So at any point, if you just give it a little push down, it does lay flat, which is really nice. So it's got this um, saddle stitched, saddle stitched, I don't know, stitched binding. So it does lay flat at all points in the notebook if you just sort of push it down lightly. Perfect. Um, having a quick look through, I can see that at first I was really excited because I know some of the journals have been having problems recently with the dots not lining up on the left and right side of the page, which makes creating layouts pretty annoying. So at first glance, I was like, yay, these dots line up perfectly. Like you can see there's no gaps or anything. So you could easily make a full layout. But as I flipped through, I noticed that that's not true of every page. So some of the pages are like this, where you've got a dot and then the next dot down is like two millimeters off maybe. And then the next one. So that's a little bit annoying. Um, I, I guess you get sort of what you pay for with a $4 notebook, but most of the pages seem to be okay. There just seem to be a couple that are a little bit out. So yeah, sort of one in every four or five spreads seems to be a little bit out. But otherwise the dots go right to the edge. There's no border where there's no dots. There's no page numbers, but there's also no branding in it either. There's no little logo or anything. So you do get dots from the top to the bottom and all the way from left to right. So there's no wasted space on each page. And if we do a quick little comparison of the Leukstrom, because I know the Leukstrom 1917 notebooks are really common. A lot of people know them and use them sort of as a comparison. This is the Leukstrom paper. So as you can see, this is quite a bit more yellow. This is a pure bright white, very similar to like regular printer paper. Um, pure white color. The dots are the same spacing. I'll just grab a little and just double check. Yep, so they're half, they're half a centimeter. Five mil dots. Yeah. And in both of these, it's a nice light gray dot. I particularly don't like grids that are too dark. The Officeworks notebooks I've noticed have quite a thick dot. Like the dot itself is quite large and it's quite dark and I don't really like this. This is a nice discrete dot. And um, yeah, it's really lovely. So as you can see in the Leukstrom, there's actually a bit of the page that you can't use because there's no dots whereas the uh, Kmart one goes right to the edge, so that's really nice. And again, I have no idea how many pages there are in this because it actually doesn't say, as far as I could see, on, I mean, maybe I'm missing it somewhere. I will try and find out from the Kmart website to see whether they have the number of pages listed. And if they don't have it listed, then I will sit and count them for you and put that somewhere in the video. Um, but the other notebook is exactly the same. For me personally, I think I like the grey a little bit better just because I like this pastel uh, mint colour and I sort of like the hard bound feel of it. But this one's really lovely as well and does have a bit more of a like quote unquote professional feel to it. So you could easily take this into like business meetings and have it be very unnoticeable. So, and you could sort of customize it to be whatever you wanted it to be. And then the last, second to last thing I have to talk about is this planner. So this was in the same section. They had quite a few different options. Um, again, there were some that were opened, but I didn't actually have a good look in them. I just picked up one that I thought was cute and we'll see, see what the inside is like. So they do come sealed in cling film, keep them nice and safe. So this one is the same mint green color of this planner and actually looking at it now it's got a weird like line of color and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on camera at all but it's it's almost like it's gotten sun bleached yeah the back doesn't have it and it's got a little mark on it again these are very cheap so you kind of get what you pay for but that is a weird like line of color it looks like another planner has sat on top of it and it's like gotten sun bleached around the outside maybe not really sure but anyway so when you open this one up it does feel a lot stiffer than like just already pushing that open it does feel a lot stiffer than this one which just flopped open really easily so it's quite stiff that's not a pocket it's just where the cover's folded over so it's got this gray 
the first page. Let's get back in the center here. Um, a basic, you can put your name, contact details, etc. And then we get straight into the monthly plan. So this is a Monday start through Sunday, monthly plan, and then there's, I'm gonna assume 12 of these. Yep, so 12, 12 of the monthly plans where the space for you to write your um, date in for each of the days of the month. Right off the bat, this paper feels different. I'm gonna do a pen test in a minute, but this is definitely thinner. Not by a lot, but it definitely feels different to dot grid paper. It's really quite thin. I don't know if you can hear that or like see it bending, but it is very thin it's like standard printer paper like you can see i've already like bent and ruffled up this page so then we've got weekly plan so we've got it says at the top weekly plan plans and ideas these are just blank boxes we've got monday and then a to-do list and a blank note section and tuesday wednesday are the same thursday friday saturday sunday cool okay and then you turn over the page and you've got the same again so plans, ideas, Monday through Sunday. I really like that the weekends are not put together because often I have not many to-dos during the week because a lot of what I do is at work and I don't use my planner the same way at work. But on Saturdays and Sundays, I have lots of to-dos. They're the days I get all my chores done. They're the days I get like everything done around the house. They're the days I go out with friends and all that sort of stuff. So I actually have more plans on the weekends. So I love that this is two separate days with equal space. And it's just that all the way through. Um, it does not. It does not come with a bookmark. So the dot grid journal actually did. I didn't show it, but it does have a single bookmark. Uh, this planner does not. So you have to find some other clip to keep your to, so that you know where, like which day of the week you're up to. And then at the back, after all of your weeks, it does have. nine spreads so like 18 pages of note paper this is a really dark black line if that bothers you all it would bother me a little very neutral planner does lay flat with a little bit of sort of pushing down lays flat absolutely fine would be very easy to write right up to the edge there's no problem sort of getting your hand on either side of the page i will do a pen test it does seem like quite thin paper but if um if the thin paper doesn't bother you, because I don't mind a little bit of ghosting. I don't like when paper bleeds, but ghosting is fine with me. So I would be okay. And again, it's a very bright white paper. Really nice and compact. I mean, the whole year in one little A5 book doesn't seem like a bad fit to me. It doesn't have quite enough notes paper for what I like. And um, yeah, I think, again, this is just a really like personal preference. Like, do you like having lots of lists and lots of space for each day? Because this certainly has that but you have to date it yourself. Um, and you just have to sort of work out whether you would need a full two page spread for each of your weeks. And the last thing I have to talk about is these highlighters. So these actually say brush tip highlighter. So I think it's basically just brush tip pens in the highlighter colors. Uh, again, there's really, this Anko brand really doesn't have a lot of information on its packaging. So I'm gonna open these up and we're gonna do some pen tests with these colors. So they are brush tip. The caps, ooh, the caps do seal quite tightly. They're actually kind of hard to pull in and out. And they're hard to, to click back in too. So keep that in mind if you have a terrible hand, like if you have hand, weak hand grip or anything, they are like, I'm putting my full force into clicking that shut so keep that in mind and they are quite a long tip I think this is actually yeah it has it's actually pulled out a little from the so I may have damaged that by pulling it in and out so many times so in comparison this is a Tombow brush marker so you can see they're as long as a Tombow marker but they're a little bit thinner 
and they're certainly a shorter pen. So even with the cap on the end, they're shorter than a Tombow. Okay, so I've got the uh, grey dot journal and I'm just going to do a pen test. Okay, so I've done the pen test and I've used the Tombow brush tip pen. I've used a pencil. This is a clicky pencil from Muji. A Muji 0.5 gel pen. I used the Tombow brush marker. This is my purple. This Milan marker, very similar to the... Um, uh, I'll leave it linked below, but they're just like a texture marker that I use a lot in my bullet journal. And a mild liner. And then I've just swatched out all six of the colours of these highlight brush markers. Uh, they're just highlighters in the colour range, otherwise they're basically a brush pen the same way like a Tombow is a brush pen. So they've got like a nice purple, the pink, the blue, the green and the orange. The yellow is much brighter, like this is, it looks like it's going to be a pastel yellow, but this is significantly brighter in the pen form than it is in the body of the pen. But the others are all pretty accurate to their colour. They're quite nice to write with. Um, they're a relatively... Um, I think they're probably quite a beginner friendly pen. I'm not the best at brush lettering, but they're quite easy to get like a thin and thick line with. Um, but again, they're really cheap, really great to test out, see if you like brush pens. And so now let's do the reveal and we'll flip it over and see what the bleeding and ghosting is like. I actually, I'm going to grab also a fine liner, because I realised we didn't have a fine liner as a test. And I might actually test out a Sharpie pen too if I've got one. Here we go. Sharpie pen. And while we're at it, let's actually try a Sharpie texture. This is the Sharpie Fine Point. Ooh, it's an old Sharpie. Let's see if this one's better. I don't know why anyone would use a Sharpie in their bullet journal, but let's just test it out and see what happens. So flip the page over. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of definitely ghosting and some bleeding. So the Sharpie pen, the Sharpie permanent marker obviously bled through. It bleeds through on pretty much all paper. Not quite. There are some really thick papers, obviously, that it doesn't bleed through, but it does not surprise me at all that the Sharpie bled through. The mild liner and the fine liner... Sorry, the fine liner and the Sharpie pen both ghost but don't bleed through. The only pen that bled through a little is this um, Milan marker. I do find that they're quite juicy, so again, that doesn't surprise me. None of the highlighter brush markers bled through and neither did the Tombow brush pen, although it's getting close, but there's definite ghosting. So in my bullet journal, I really don't mind a little bit of ghosting. Once you write on top of this, you would hardly even notice it. But I know that really bothers some people, so I would I would hazard a guess and say that this is maybe 90 GSM paper, so a tiny bit thicker than printer paper, but really not a lot thicker. Um, but yeah, that would be my guess. Okay, so I've just done a quick uh, similar pen test to the dot grid, and I've done it in the uh, planner, the ideas and plans book. And... As you can see, it's pretty much the same. We've got a little bit of bleed through with the mild liner and the uh, blue Milan, and then ghosting with all of the other pens. Um, the fine liner sort of ghosts 
I would say the least, but you can definitely see this through the page. Um, again, to me, it feels like this paper is slightly thinner than the dot grid journals, but it could just be sort of my perception of it. They might actually be the same. I will double check on the website and see whether I can find out any more information about the paper quality, but I would say 80 or 90 GSM for the paper. It is a nice bright white. Um, yes, yeah, so let me just push all my pens to a gigantic pile on the side. So overall, I would say that these journals, really for what you are paying for them, they're really great. If you want white paper, nice light dots, top to bottom, no page numbers, no branding, no nothing on the paper, just a blank slate to start with, I think these are really great. These would be perfect for a first time bullet journaler because they're not expensive. So if you stuff up a page, all you have to do is turn over, stick them together, start again. Like it's really easy. Uh, it's really cheap. So if you're not sure if bullet journaling is for you, great way to get into it and get started. Um, the paper quality, not the best. Depends whether that really matters to you or not. I know some people are really fussy about their paper and that's understandable. But if you just want a notebook to get sort of started into bullet journaling or just to take notes for anything, um, I think these would be a really good journal. Again, they're really cheap. They feel nice, you know, like you could easily take this into work and doesn't look cheap. It doesn't sort of look, um, I don't know, ugly. Like I think they're quite attractive planners and yeah, really nice range. I like, I forgot to mention, this is quite a solid co cover, but it's not as thick as this one. Um, the planner is really nice. I like that it includes a good space for the weekend. It's got a good amount of space for each day. The lines are quite black. But again, this will just depend entirely on personal preference. Do you like a planner that has space for lists and a blank space for notes? You know, this is not an hourly planner. It's not a vertical planner, although it does sort of have these like two vertical columns per day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very basic planner. Again, nice bright white paper, not the thickest paper, but I think again, really great if you're just getting into planning or if you just need somewhere to write down your stuff for each day. Um, it's sort of perfect for that. And again, the dot grid notebook um, with the sort of floppy cover. It's a bit disappointing that they don't have any difference. They don't have any point of difference on their covers. So you actually sort of can't tell, you don't know anything about them when you're buying them. You don't know about the paper quality unless there's one there already open for you to have a look at. So I do wish they had a little bit more information about the page count and the paper quality on here. But again, you're paying $4, so if you don't like it, it, it is only $4. I think, again, this plan is really cute. It's got nice fonting, nice, um, you know, light gray printing and everything. It's a really small planner. So if you wanted to do your whole year in this, you would really not have to carry around a lot in your handbag. And uh, again, perfect for kids. If your kids wanted to get into planning, but aren't really old enough to actually be like planning, then this would be a perfect option. And I actually really, really like the sticker book. I've now lost it. There it is. Uh, the planner sticker book, seven pages. Again, really cheap. Even if you only sort of used half the pages, I think it would be still worth it. The first page and the second page are definite favorites. Um, I really like these sort of clear, you know, planner queen. Feeling fancy, you got this. I think they're great stickers. And then there's some really functional ones through here as well. I wonder. They don't look like they're perfectly, yeah, they're not like perfectly sized to go in here, although they do fit quite nicely down the side there and they do not line up with the lines in the planner. You couldn't see that there, but they don't line up perfectly. Unfortunately, with the lines, they're pretty close. You could sort of make it work, I think, but they're not designed for this planner in particular. So, and the brush pens. I actually really like the brush pens. I think um, the yellow I wouldn't use because I prefer pastel colors in my planner, but the other four I would definitely get a lot of use out of, and the yellow I could use just as a regular highlighter too. But I don't need any of this stuff. So I went to Kmart and I really liked the look of it and I brought it all home and I realized that I have a million gray notebooks and a ton of brush pens and so many other pens that I do not need any of this. So I'm going to give it away in this video. 
So leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite planner is, your favorite planner accessory. Tell me just your favorite thing about the thing that, tell me your favorite thing that you use to plan with, whether it's the planner, whether it's stickers, whether it's pens, whether it's your a fa fancy ruler, like tell me down below your favorite thing. And I'm gonna pick two winners uh, in this video for each of the grid journals. And then if you head over to my Instagram, I will be giving away the planner and the stickers and the, um, oops, the markers will be going with one of the journals. So I'll do three giveaways. If someone wants this, I'll chuck it in there as well. So I'll do three giveaways, one for the planner and the stickers, one for the dot journal, and one for this gray journal with the pens. So leave your comment down below. I will uh, announce the winner in seven days. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. I always love to hear from you guys in the comments and I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful day wherever you are and stay safe. Bye.